Aesop's Stories. Number 86. The Fir Tree and the Bramble In a large forest filled with many different trees and plants, there lived a tall and proud fir tree. Next to the fir tree grew a small, humble bramble, a type of bush that was thick with thorns. One bright and sunny day, the fir tree looked down at the bramble and said, You are such a useless plant. I am tall and strong, and my wood is used to build roofs and houses. But you? You're just a thorny bush, good for nothing at all. The bramble listened quietly to the fir tree's boastful words. Despite the harsh words, the bramble remained calm and wise. After a moment, the bramble replied, Oh, my tall friend, you might not see the whole picture. Yes, you are used in buildings and are very important to humans. But have you ever thought about the axes and saws that will eventually come to cut you down because of your usefulness? If you knew the full story, you might wish you were a simple bramble like me. The fir tree laughed at the bramble's words, thinking it was ridiculous to fear axes and saws. Why would I want to be like you? I am proud of how useful I am the fir tree exclaimed. Time passed, and the seasons changed. One chilly morning, a group of woodcutters came into the forest. They had come to find strong trees to cut down for building materials. Their eyes landed on the tall, proud fir tree. As the woodcutters approached with their sharp axes and saws, the fir tree suddenly remembered the bramble's words. It felt a wave of fear knowing that its end was near, and it was about to be cut down. Meanwhile, the bramble watched from the side, safe and untouched. Its thorns made it undesirable, and it was left in peace. The woodcutters did not bother with the prickly bramble, seeing no use for it in their work. As the fir tree was being cut down, it realized the truth in the bramble's words. Being valuable and useful had brought it to this early end. While the bramble's simplicity and lack of appeal had granted it safety and a longer life in the forest. The fir tree, now fallen, finally understood what the bramble meant. Better poverty without care than riches with. The bramble lived on, continuing to grow quietly in the forest, its simplicity protecting it from harm. The story of the fir tree and the bramble spread throughout the forest, reminding all the plants and trees that sometimes being less noticeable and not so obviously useful can be a blessing in disguise. It taught them the value of a peaceful, untroubled life over a life filled with danger and fear, even if that life is considered more valuable by others. Number 87. The Tale of the Mouse, the Frog, and the Hawk In a peaceful land filled with meadows and a clear, sparkling pool, there lived a mouse and a frog. The mouse spent most of its life on the land, enjoying the soft grass and plentiful seeds. The frog, however, preferred the cool waters of the pool, diving and swimming with ease. One day the frog thought of a mischievous plan. He wanted to show the mouse his home in the pool, but he knew the mouse would never go willingly. So the frog came up with a sneaky idea. He suggested they tie one of their legs together as a symbol of their friendship. The mouse, trusting his friend, agreed happily. At first, they hopped and scurried around the meadow looking for food and enjoying the sunshine. The mouse was happy thinking how wonderful it was to have such a friend. Little did he know the frog had other plans. Gradually, the frog began leading the mouse closer to the pool. The mouse, tied to the frog, followed innocently unaware of the danger. When they reached the brink of the pool, the frog, with a sudden leap, jumped into the water, dragging the unsuspecting mouse with him. The frog swam delightfully in the water, croaking joyfully thinking he had done something great by bringing his friend to his watery world. But the mouse did not enjoy the water at all. Struggling to stay afloat, the mouse soon became exhausted and, unable to breathe, was suffocated by the water. His lifeless body floated on the surface, still tied to the frog. High above in the sky, a hawk was flying, searching for food. He spotted the mouse floating in the water and swooped down with his sharp talons. In a swift movement, the hawk grabbed the mouse and lifted off into the sky. Because the frog was still tied to the mouse, he too was carried off into the air. The frog, who had only thought about his own fun, now found himself in a terrible situation. He tried to escape, but it was too late. The hawk, pleased with the extra catch, flew to his nest where he enjoyed a double meal. 
The frog, who had caused the trouble, ended up suffering the same fate as the mouse. This tale of the mouse, the frog, and the hawk teaches us a valuable lesson. Mischief leads to trouble not only for others, but often for oneself as well. The frog's plan to deceive his friend backfired, showing that sometimes, in trying to harm others, we only bring harm upon ourselves. The saying, harm hatch, harm catch, reminds us all that the consequences of our actions can sometimes catch us too. Number 88. The Man and the Bite In a small village, there was a man who was bitten by a dog while walking through the market. The bite was painful, and the man was worried about the wound. He wanted to find a cure quickly, to avoid any further complications. The man went from one house to another, asking for remedies and advice on how to heal his wound. Most of the villagers gave him common remedies like herbs and ointments, but nothing seemed to work. As he continued his search, he became more anxious about finding a cure. One day, while walking near the center of the village, he met a friend who had heard about his unfortunate situation. This friend listened to the man's concerns, and then offered him a very unusual piece of advice. If you want to be cured, the friend said, take a piece of bread and dip it in the blood from your wound. Then go and find the dog that bit you and give the bread to him. The man was taken aback by this suggestion. It sounded strange and contrary to what he expected. He laughed at the idea, thinking his friend was not serious. Why would I do such a thing? The man asked, still laughing. That would be like inviting every dog in the village to bite me. His friend looked at him seriously and explained, Sometimes, facing the cause of your trouble can help you overcome it. But if you reward the dog that harmed you, other dogs might think they can bite you too without consequence. The man thought about this advice, but decided it was too risky. He did not follow his friend's suggestion. Instead, he continued to use traditional remedies and eventually, his wound healed slowly on its own. However, the man often thought about the deeper meaning of his friend's advice. He realized it was about more than just the bite. It was a lesson about how to deal with those who cause harm. By offering bread dipped in his wound's blood to the dog, he would be showing kindness to the very creature that hurt him. But such kindness could also encourage more harmful behavior if not directed wisely. The man learned that while it's important to be forgiving and kind, it's also crucial to ensure that our actions do not encourage or allow harmful behaviors to continue unchecked. This incident taught him a valuable lesson about the balance between kindness and wisdom. From then on, the man was more cautious about how he treated those who wronged him. He understood that benefits bestowed upon those with harmful intentions could potentially increase their means of causing harm rather than correcting their behavior. This insight helped him not only in dealing with dogs, but with people in his life as well, making him a wiser and more thoughtful villager. Number, eight, number 89. The Tale of the Two Pots Once upon a time there was a river that flowed gently through a beautiful valley. In this river there floated two pots. One was made of shiny brass and the other was made of simple earthenware. One sunny day, the river's current grew stronger after a heavy rain. The brass pot and the earthenware pot found themselves floating downstream, pushed along by the flowing water. As they bobbed along, the brass pot moved closer to the earthenware pot. The earthenware pot, feeling nervous, quickly spoke up. Please stay away from me, it said politely to the brass pot. If you come too close and touch me, I might break. I am not as strong as you. It's better if we keep some distance between us. The brass pot, gleaming in the sunlight, looked at the earthenware pot with a kind expression. I understand your worry, replied the brass pot. I don't want to cause you any harm. Let's try to float apart so that we both can continue safely down the river. The earthenware pot was grateful for the brass pot's understanding and kindness. However, the river's currents were playful and sometimes unpredictable. Despite their efforts, the two pots occasionally bumped into each other as they were carried along by the water. Each time they came close, the earthenware pot would remind the brass pot, Please be careful, I am fragile and could easily break. The brass pot would always respond, 
I'm trying my best to keep our distance. I promise not to hurt you. This went on for some time as they traveled together down the river. They talked about the sights they saw, the fish that swam beneath them, and the birds that flew overhead. Despite their differences, they started to enjoy each other's company. However, the earthenware pot always kept in mind its own fragility. It knew that it was not as tough as the brass pot and that their friendship needed to be handled with care. Eventually the river calmed, and the pots found themselves in a wider, slower part of the river. Here, the water spread out, and there was more space for them to float without coming too close to each other. The earthenware pot said to the brass pot, Thank you for being so careful and considerate. I've realized that being different doesn't mean we can't be friends. We just have to understand and respect each other's limits. The brass pot agreed. Yes, true friends respect each other's needs in space. I'm glad we could travel together safely. The story of the two pots teaches us an important lesson. Friends respect each other's differences and limitations. Just like the pots, people are made differently, and understanding these differences helps build strong and lasting friendships. It shows us that equals, those who understand and respect each other, indeed make the best friends. Number 90. The Clever Sheep and the Tricky Wolf In a lush green forest, filled with many animals, there was a wolf who found himself in great trouble. One day, while hunting, he had an unfortunate encounter with some fierce dogs. The wolf fought bravely, but was left sorely wounded and barely able to move. He managed to drag himself back to his lair, but there he lay, weak and in pain, unable to hunt for food. As days passed, the wolf became very hungry. He knew he needed help if he was going to survive. One sunny afternoon, a sheep passed by near his hiding place. Seeing an opportunity, the wolf called out to the sheep with a weak and pitiful voice. Dear sheep, the wolf said, trying to sound as friendly as possible. I am so ill and cannot move from my spot. Could you please bring me some water from the stream over there? I am very thirsty and just a little water would help me greatly. The sheep stopped and looked at the wolf. She felt sorry for him, but she was also cautious. She knew that wolves were cunning and not to be trusted easily. The wolf, seeing her hesitate, added quickly, Do not worry, dear sheep. If you bring me some water, I can manage to find myself some meat. I just need a drink to gather my strength. The sheep thought for a moment and then replied, Oh, Mr. Wolf, I understand you are thirsty, but if I come too close to bring you water, I fear that I might end up being the meat you are talking about. The wolf was surprised by the sheep's clever response. He had hoped his sly words would trick the sheep into coming closer, but the sheep saw right through his plan. She knew that helping the wolf might put her in danger. The sheep, keeping a safe distance, said wisely, I hope you find the strength to get well, but I must be on my way. Without another word, she quickly trotted off into the safety of the forest. The wolf was left alone, his plan foiled. He realized that the sheep was smarter than he had thought. Although he was disappointed, he couldn't help but admire the sheep's cleverness. From that day on, the wolf learned that not all creatures are easily deceived, and the sheep told her friends in the forest about her encounter, reminding them always to be cautious and wise when dealing with strangers who might have hidden motives. The story of the clever sheep and the tricky wolf spread throughout the forest, teaching all the animals a valuable lesson. To be alert and thoughtful, especially when dealing with someone whose words do not match their true intentions. This tale also reminded them that hypocritical speeches, no matter how cleverly disguised, are often seen through by those who listen carefully.